really excited to be here uh, today. Uh, thank you to Brand Innovators for, for putting it all together. And um, well, I mean, interesting year, right? Uh, for all of us in, in, in many ways, certainly a challenging year, uh, but hopefully as we look back, we can see that we've learned a lot and we're also taking, we're also taking good things, good learnings as we go into the future. Next slide, please. Yes, I'm not going to, I mean, Nick did a brilliant introduction better than I could uh, do myself. Uh, my name is Ricardo Marquez. I'm the VP of marketing for, for Miklo Boltra. I have been 15 years with Anauser Bush. I'm based out of New York. And in my previous role, I had the pleasure of leading uh, brands like Budweiser, Bush, Natural Light, amongst, amongst many others. And again, really excited to be here today. Well, I think this, this shot kind of summarizes uh, how we all felt uh, back in January this year, right? I mean, a brand new year, uh, we were, you know, getting our plans ready for the Super Bowl. And I think we had this uh, collective sense of energy and optimism as you should, as you go into, into a brand new year. But then of course, I mean, a, a few months, uh, a couple of months later, as we head into, into March, this is, this is what happened, right? So, uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, I mean, this, uh, you know, world pandemic changed all of our lives and continues to do so. And I can tell you out of personal experience, I mean, I, I got to, I took this role, uh, leading the Miklo Boltra team, uh, mid Feb. Uh, so I, I had a chance to spend two weeks with my new team. And after two weeks, we were all uh, working from home. So that was, uh, in itself, uh, a very interesting experience. Now, I can tell you that the, the very first thing that we did uh, in the face of this pandemic as, as, as a company really was to put the safety of our colleagues, the safety of our people and our communities first, uh, as uh, you know, this was number one, the number one priority across the company and all of our brands. And, and we were proud to be a small part of of, of the, the help and, and the effort that went into fighting this pandemic uh, with one of the initiatives such as the, the hand sanitizer. But this was the, the very first thing on all of our minds uh, collectively. Now, but of course, I mean, we were still all dealing with the fact that uh, sporting events uh, for all the right reasons were getting canceled across the board. And we were dealing with this uh, as people, as, as sports fans, of course, as, as marketers as well, as uh, I mean, we know that uh, sports and our association with sports is, is uh, the fuel and, and the, one of the most important pillars behind what we do around our brands. That's why we were uh, hopeful and excited when the NBA announced that were, they were looking to bring the restart of the season uh, you know, without, without fans. I mean, the season kicked back in, in late uh, July, July 30, 31st was, was game one. But when we saw this back in May, we, we were very, very uh, hopeful. But then of course, I mean, for all the right reasons, uh, this restart, much anticipated restart of the season would take place in empty, empty arenas, right? Um, and that uh, left us all um, looking at the glass uh, half, half full and half em empty. Great to have the season back, great to have the NBA back, but at the same time, of course, we're all missing the energy of, of fans. And we were not alone, right? I mean, this quote kind of summarizes it and, and uh, the, the impact of having of not having the energy, the excitement of fans uh, was of course, uh, you know, felt by, by everybody, including the athletes themselves. I mean, the joy of playing, they play, these athletes, amazing athletes play for their fans. They play for the joy that they, they provoke in their fans. So without fans, you know, what was the point in playing? So um, that was for us a pivotal, a pivotal moment. And we thought about the, this quote from the great uh, John, John Wooden, uh, you know, don't let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can do. 
Uh, and, and this was kind of fuel uh, and uh, inspiration for us as we approached all of our agency partners in, um, in search for new solutions, new ideas, creativity that would allow us to, to address this, this challenge. So we asked, we got all of our, our partners together and, and we asked ourselves a simple question. What if we could bring fans to arenas safely? And, and what if we could do it uh, with new solutions that could be out there? Uh, and we, we, we got uh, a number of different answers. And one agency in particular, FCB in New York, brought us what at the time, and I vividly remember this meeting earlier this year, it felt like something out of a, a sci-fi kind of, kind of uh, movie, right? Very futuristic. And these are some of the renderings that FCB uh, brought to us uh, back then. This is earlier in the year, right? You could see like all these faces in the, in the arena, virtually sitting, um, you know, in their seats. And also some ideas on how we could drive interactivity between the athletes and, and the fans. And, you know, we, we thought this was absolutely uh, crazy. Uh, how could we, you know, possibly put this together? But nevertheless, we were intrigued and excited enough to approach our partners at the NBA with, with these renderings and with this uh, potential thought of bringing fans uh, virtually uh, to the arenas. And we were uh, pleasantly surprised or not surprised, given that the NBA is always ahead of the game, but we were pleasantly surprised that the NBA themselves, together with Microsoft, were already uh, thinking about this in that very same, same direction. And that exactly this partnership between three incredible uh, companies, Anheuser Busch, Microsoft, and of course the league, uh, the NBA, was indeed what allowed us to put courtside, the Michelob Ultra courtside experience together. I'm going to show you a quick uh, film uh, that we used to launch and to get fans excited for this groundbreaking virtual fan experience. Let's take a look. All right, we we actually uh, we actually played the the full recap of the uh, of the program, uh, which is great. Uh, but I still like to to cue the, uh, the 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 spot that that initial spot uh, we shared to tease and get fans excited for for the experience. So if we can we can put cue that that one.
Yeah, so uh, so this was, you know, of course, an epic piece of film, you know, leaving fans intrigued. I mean, Scotty Pippen and, and teasing out this idea of uh, this courtside experience. And, you know, as, as, as Fast Company puts it, I mean, uh, this was uh, not uh, a, a billboard sitting courtside. This was an experience. This was indeed branded content being part of the game and augmenting the experience for everybody. So as, as a, a part of our plan, uh, you know, we teased out this amazing experience and throughout the season, we put in place a number of initiatives to really bring, uh, you know, fans to get these tickets, exclusive tickets uh, to sit courtside. And they could do that very simply by taking a picture of the Michelob Ultra ribbon on one of our bottles and submitting to our website or by engaging with us on Twitter live during the games. So. Uh, the second part of this plan was indeed about getting fans to join and knowing that they could be sitting courtside as well. Let's take a look at this next video. And what happened next was uh, incredible, right? We, uh, we got fans uh, together with, with the NBA and, and all of the teams, I mean, working together with, with us, we got fans to, to, to fill those seats, bring the energy and the excitement to, uh, to the court. And, and we, got, we got to create some, some, uh, some amazing moments, memorable moments that we won't forget uh, anytime soon. Let's take a look at this next, next video capturing some of those moments. Right, I think we replayed the same video, but that, that's okay. Let's go back to uh, to uh, to the to the deck. So you know, we created a number of amazing moments. I mean, we had uh, fans dressing up. We had a literally a dog sitting courtside. We had a goat sitting courtside. We had a number of celebrities, of course, Peyton Manning, Shaq, amongst many many others, Scottie Pippen, of course, uh, and and you know that uh, that we transformed this. Uh, you know, uh, experiencing something that definitely uh, created some some unique unique moments, and that kind of brings us to the point, right? I mean, at CBS, I mean, this this piece kind of uh, one of the journalists that was part of this this experience. His conclusion was, you know, technology without the humanity behind it is is you know it's it's nothing, right? So it, it's it's about these moments of human connection, the bond between the, 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 the athletes, the fans sitting courtside, virtually courtside, the fans at home. It, it, it was the experiences where we were able to create those moments 
and the, the sort of, again, of humanity, the humanity behind this experience, that's what made it so unique and so special. So, you know, it, it kind of looking back, uh, I mean, this could not uh, be more accurate, uh, you know, never let a good crisis go to waste. Uh, in reflecting over the, thinking about these last few months, I think three things that really uh, kept us in the right direction, moving in the right direction. Brand strategy at the center. I mean, it's, uh, it would be like trying to, to sail in the middle of a storm without your compass, right? So I think in a situation like this, we found ourselves uh to to uh to hold on to what we stood for as a brand but not only as Mikolo Boltra it was also part of a portfolio strategy right so having clarity of direction could not be more important in a situation where you're living in in a volatile reality with a lot of variables changing around you we, we literally you know had to scrap our plans at the start of the year and restart planning and sometimes planning with within like a month, uh, you know, looking at, at at the month ahead. But what kept us afloat was indeed this clarity of mind uh, on what our place in the world is with Mikola Boltra. We stand for joy. We say it's only worth it if you enjoy it. We are a champion for for that idea. That's what that was exactly what drove our entire plan for the entire year. Secondly, uh, one of the things that was not entirely new, but it became even more important was this publisher mindset. Uh, again, I think between the cycles of content creation and approval cycles, everything went into warp speed. Uh, and again, uh, it, it was materially important. The ability to make quick decisions, to create content very quickly, to riff off what's going on in the world around you and literally having this, this, this publisher kind of agility was was instrumental for us to be able to create everything we did over the last few months and especially around around the nba and again finally i think these last months reminded us that creativity and innovation are more and more part of the answers we're looking for especially when we're living through a, a situation like you know created by this pandemic where we're looking for new ways in. We're looking for different solutions. And, and, and again, I cannot thank enough, uh, the, you know, our partners, FCB, White & Kennedy, uh, Draftline, all of the partners that brought those ideas to the table to make sure that we could continue to approach this new reality in a, in a different innovative way. And, and as we look forward, uh, you know, it's clearly the future is already here. I mean, we, we say uh, very often at AB that, you know, we don't want to go back to, to normal, of course. I mean, we want to get uh, past this, this, this pandemic, but we want to retain these learnings and help us shape a, a better future. And the future is in a way already here. So it's time of that to say, or hone in on three things that probably will shape our plans going forward, then I would start with, with this. One of the things that probably will continue to, to uh, that we've learned from this and, and that will continue to be a trend going forward is this democratization of the VIP experience. I mean, case in point, courtside seats are often, you know, of course, unattainable for, for most fans, but through technology, uh, this sort of VIP experience could be attainable, could be within reach. And I think that's as technology evolves, as we think about VR and augmented reality and a lot of other things that are in, in, in the making, we believe that this is, is going to be a trend. But again, it's only as, as important as the people uh, behind it. This humanity aspect will, of course, be the uh, equally as, as important. Secondly, uh, again, from sponsorships to partnerships, clearly, uh, none of this would have been possible uh, without the incredible partnership uh, uh, with the NBA. And, you know, if traditionally we would uh, approach, um, you know, the, the, the league to, uh, to, to buy a, a product or, or a, you know, a package 
of some sorts here in this case we were building this plane together uh, and it was kind of uh, uh, you know it was a, it was a different way in because we were uh, building something together in the same time that we were uh, you know kind of looking at all of the commercial aspects of the partnership but we were building this unique experience together and and the notion of partnership has never uh, been more important and that's why we don't want to go back to to sponsorships we want to keep fostering amazing partnerships going forward and, and then finally uh the, the rise of the brand uh, newsroom um again uh, it's 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 been there most often around you know moments like the super bowl or you know like big cultural moments but this idea of being always on and having a uh, a system and a team and processes in place structures in place that allow us to 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 run this idea of having a a, a newsroom literally a brand led strategy led of course newsroom i think that's going to become even more important as we go forward and i think let's go forward i think that you know when you look at these three uh th three things uh, most of them were already there in some shape or form. I think what what happened uh, over the last few months, looking back at the, into the year, is, is indeed that these trends accelerated massively. Probably we, we, we gained five, five, five to 10 years when it comes down to these, to these ideas and, and, and many more. I mean, it accelerated a, a number of uh, trends and, and concepts that were already uh, part of our day to day. So this was it. This was my my opening piece. I just wanted to take again the opportunity to to, to say thank you uh, to all of our partners, especially to to the NBA, uh, to the teams, to the PA. I mean, this has been definitely a very very challenging year. Uh, but uh, thanks to this amazing partnership with all of you, uh, we could create something very unique, very special. Hey, Ricardo, how are you? Hey, Jim, how are you? Good, good to see you. I, I don't know whether we're waiting for the Brand Innovators host or not to join us, or we could just jump in and continue on. Maybe that's us. Okay. That's us. Let's go. <laughs> well, let's go. So that was terrific. I, we really enjoyed that. Um, you know, it, it's funny. Um, you know, I've done a bunch of these this year. Um, I had the, I talked to the head of Barbie dolls, I had I talked to the head of M and M's. I've talked to the head of Uber, but I got to say, there's none we look more forward to than speaking to the Michelob Ultra person today. Because now you're right in the wheelhouse, so uh, it's actually something I know pretty well, um, and uh, we enjoy. So uh, this is fun for us. This is the one that combines uh, our beverages that we enjoy with the sports that we all enjoy. So. Um, so welcome. Uh, I just wanted to take Thank a you. second, right? Because um, I know you were introduced earlier, uh, but we had a little fun with you yesterday when we spoke to you because we just want to get this out in the open that I went to Iona College, right? And, you know, looking at your bio, in addition to being with AB for 15 years, right? And uh, working uh, both in Europe and Brazil, uh, you also uh, did classes with the Harvard Business School, NYU Stern, um, you know, so we, we just want you to take it easy on me um, during this conversation, all right? I feel like I'm a little bit over my head. <laughs> <laughs> not at all, not at all. I mean, at the end of the day, just a, just a, a sports fan and, and a beer guy, uh, you know, that's, that's, I think, the most important for our conversation today. <laughs> well, I've been over to AB, and I know you're all sports fans, but you're really smart on top of it. And I think uh, some of the reason why you're now one of the top beer brands out there. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to start a little bit with a wider picture, and then we'll come narrow into uh, Michelob Ultra. 
Let's talk about some of the tradition with AB InBev and how you guys are connected to sports over the years and the history of that. Um, and then we'll we'll start to go down the funnel to Miklo. Yeah, I, I think, you know, incredibly uh, uh, proud to carry this this tra tra tradition and heritage on with uh, with our with our team. Uh, but indeed, I mean, uh, for many years, I mean, the people who came before us, uh, you know, all those teams, they, they created, the, 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 they wrote many pages of the, the marketing, uh, you know, playbook, sports, the, the mar sports marketing playbook. And, and one of the things when we look back is the breakthrough thinking, looking at the next big thing, uh, trying to understand trends, uh, trying to understand fans and, and, and really acting very quickly to capture uh, and, uh, those and, and be first movers. And, and, you know, that was also what propelled us, what inspired us to place such a big bet uh, with Michelob Ultra Courtside together with the NBA. Uh, we felt that this could be something really special, really unique, living up to the tradition, the great tradition of Anouzer Bush of, you know, being innovative and bringing new ideas uh, to the table in the world of sports. It's great. Well, we've enjoyed it over the years. One of my favorites was the one in Cleveland when you guys unlocked the refrigerators after the win. Like that was one of the smartest things I've ever seen. And it got so much publicity. Like how does that an idea like that germinate? I wish I could I could take credit for that one. I have to give it up to uh, to my colleague Andy Goler on the Bud Light team and uh, Nick Kelly and, and everybody else. Matt Davis. I mean, uh, amazing, amazing idea. Uh, we, I mean, we, we did uh, so many great things when I think about the last two years. I mean, I think about the tributes we did to uh, to Derek Jeter, Dale Jr. Uh, recently, most recently last year, what we did with uh, Dwayne Wade honoring his, his retirement or even with the NWSL. Where again, when I talk about, when I spoke earlier about partnerships, not sponsorships, you know, when we did in my previous role with Budweiser, uh, looking to actively bring more sponsors to support the NWSL, that was one of the things that I, when I look back, one of the things I feel most, most uh, uh, proud of. Great. Well, let's talk about all your success with Mich Michelob Ultra because it's amazing, right? So tell us at the core how you guys were so successful and who is the Michelob Ultra drinker that you guys are trying to reach? Look, today Michelob Ultra uh, is one of, well, it is the, the, the fastest share gainer uh, in, in the U.S., uh, it was a brand ahead of its time when it was launched uh, in the turn of the century. Uh, it was one of the probably the first brand in, in, in one of the first brands tapping into this mega trend of health and wellness, you know, where consumers are looking to, you know, cut down on, on carbs, calories, but still uh, not sacrificing taste and not sacrificing a good time. Michelob Ultra was well ahead of that. And I think this year we continue to accelerate accelerate momentum. So when we think about the, the, our franchise today, we essentially have, uh, you know, simplifying it uh, a little bit, but we simply have older drinkers literally looking to cut down on carbs and calories. And we have this 21 to 29 year olds who love the idea of having a, an active lifestyle. And those, they, they are the ones who typically enjoy uh, a beer after workout, uh, they enjoy the, you know, uh, happy hour with friends, uh, but they love to have both. They don't want to sacrifice either. They love to, to be in good shape, being fit and, and work out, but they also love to have a good time with friends. Oh, I, I laugh, uh, Ricardo, because I have three children that are in that uh, age bracket, right? I have a 29-year-old, I have a 26-year-old, and I have a 23-year-old. And... Um, Maybe they are helping drive some of your sales because I, <laughs> I've seen them uh, drink quite a few Michelob Ultra. So, uh, you know, it's, it's funny back at home when you look at our lower level, it's, the refrigerator is full of it. So, um, you know, it, it, I have free right in your demo. So, uh, yeah, I, I can attest right to hear. exactly right. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit about we, we you talked a little bit in, in your uh, conversation about, of course, everything that you did with the NBA and courtside. Tell us a little bit about the tradition of how Michelob Ultra got into sports uh, and and how you embrace sports, because we know that the NBA 
and golf are very important to you today, of course. Very exciting for all of us. It's the beginning of the Masters, um, which mm -hmm. is kind of weird, right? Because we always think of the Masters is the beginning of spring, right? And that's, that's right. The of fall. So we're all screwed up this year. But tell us a little bit about golf and the NBA and how you guys have embraced ball. Yeah, well, we, we love the idea of being associated with, with sports that are part of uh, this active, balanced lifestyle we're uh, a champion for. And particularly when we, when we um, uh, took the, the, the NBA sponsorship, I mean, as the official beer partner of the NBA with Michael Boltra earlier this year, we saw that uh, you know, the NBA presented a fantastic opportunity for Michael Boltra thinking about uh, the geographic representation of the NBA fans in markets where Michael Boltra is underdeveloped. And, uh, and, you know, that on its own was for us very interesting. But then secondly, the connection to, uh, to, to culture, the connection with different, uh, different audience that could be incredibly beneficial for, for Ultra. So particularly with the NBA, we saw this, this amazing opportunity to expand our franchise. And then, of course, we keep, uh, we're still super, super excited about our partnership with, with, uh, with golf, Brooks Kapka, one of our partners. Um, and we believe that the, the, the point of view that we're bringing to the table is unique. Uh, essentially, when we, when we approach uh, any sport, in fact, we come from this idea that uh, you win because you're happy, right? You win uh, because of the joy. You win because you take time to spend time with your family and friends and, and capture those 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 uh, memorable moments. And that's equally as important as working hard and going to the gym, right? Uh, so we, we believe that this idea of balance is indeed very uh, unique to ultra. And that's what we're trying to, to bring across any, any, any sports platform. So you think if I drink enough Michelob, I could look like brutes? <laughs> you still need to work hard you need to go to the gym. <laughs> but if you do both, that's the magic combination. That that's oh, really okay. what we're what we're going for. <laughs> yeah, I might have to grow at least six inches or something. Uh, <laughs> I'll work on it. So you know, there's no conversation that you can have, sadly, these days without the conversation about the pandemic and COVID. You know, we know there's so many challenges, right? That the stadiums are not serving beer, the the bars, many bars are opening, closing. How do you maintain reach? in a year when, you know, you, you have to be so flexible and nimble, right? As things open and close throughout the U.S. and across the world. How, how, do, you, how do you manage uh, through all these challenges? Look, we, we, have, um, we have seen uh, some of the, the, the trends that were kind of already there, but again, continue to accelerate this move towards e-commerce. That's one of the, the, the things that we have seen in terms of uh, shift in behavior. Uh, of course, people spend are spending a lot more time at home. Therefore, they uh, don't go to bars. They tend to order online. That was already the case. But now, I mean, this year was exponential on that front. Uh, we've also seen the, the home becoming more of a a place to uh, to to uh, uh, you know to host fr friends within your small bubble, of course, and within the safety guidelines. But the home has become a lot more important. So people investing in their homes and making the, their homes more, uh, more comfortable. But then again, I think we go back to strategy. We go back to uh, our place in the world, what we're here to do, both as an Azur Bush, uh, looking at our portfolio and then with Nicola Boltra. Um, I have to go back to earlier this year when we uh, partnered with the match champions for charity. Uh, this was the first, uh, let's say, professional sports event uh, right uh, around Memorial Day weekend was actually Memorial Day weekend and fans were ecstatic and we we brought a little bit of joy and we believe that we brought a little bit of normalcy in you know, mm -hmm. people's lives in such a turbulent time by bringing a little bit of joy, levity and, um, and, and energy around around that moment. Yeah, you, you, you talked in, in your presentation about it's only worth it if you enjoy it. So is that part of the mantra and with in-person visits being limited, right? And embracing, you know, more of the home life and, and enjoying that until life gets back to normal. Exactly. I mean, and, and the, coming back to 
to that idea of, of joy and, and, and especially in a year like this, it is actually what, you know, what, what people are, are, are craving. They're craving that, you know, joy, um, optimism. Uh, and, and if we can bring a little bit of that, I mean, we, we are very fortunate. And, and we also love this, this, this idea. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. I mean, all the hard work, uh, be it, you know, if you're an athlete or any of us doing their jobs, I mean, all the effort, all of the, the energy, uh, it's really only, only, only makes sense if, if at the end of the day, you get the chance to, to enjoy that. And, and, and if you get the chance to spend time with people who are important to you and doing things you love. So it, it's funny because you, it, it, during the whole pandemic, which kind of started in March, right? And for the first couple of months, most of the creative was kind of COVID creative, right? It was all about, you know, but then we saw it kind of transition into, you know, more normal creative. How is your creative changing as the time goes on during the pandemic, like, and, and how much goes into the thinking of, um, of the message and, and being cognizant of what's going on? Yeah, I, I, there's a, there's a, a brilliant piece written by Jeff Beer, uh, Fast Company, uh, exactly about that first uh, uh, program we put out around the match uh, champions for charity. Uh, and, and it's exactly what he, he writes, he said, well, this is brilliant. I think the headline is why Michelob Ultra is the, the true champion of the match, something along those lines. He was really, really excited about it. And so were we, because it, we, we, we brought a ton of fun. I mean, we had deep fake uh, videos uh, from, from Caddyshack, from the judge character from Caddyshack, <laughs> but, but with, with Peyton Manning's face, uh, you know, on, on the judge. And, and we had a ton of fun and, you know, we brought that forward as, as part of our, of our plan. We had uh, a scramble, uh, a price scramble during the, during the, the actual match. And that was a, a breath of fresh air after all of that wave of communication that was, of course, uh, within context made, made, made a lot of sense, but at the same time, after a few, a few weeks started to contribute to the levels of anxiety and stress, which so it, it, it was, uh, you know, consumers, again, people were fans were craving that sort of humor you know, lighthearted nature of, of beer marketing. And that we were fortunate to be able to bring that forward. It's great. You know, let's, I, I always like to talk about the Super Bowl, and I, and I think if you had to tell me what your spot was going to be, you would have to kill me. So, so, I'm <laughs> gonna go with that. so but I, I would love to tell me about like, when you guys approach something like the Super Bowl, like what is the thinking in terms of a portfolio versus, you know, what brands are going to participate exactly? How do you guys, you know, come up with those decisions. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the, the lineup of brands uh, uh, going to Super Bowl uh, always der derives from uh, portfolio strategy, uh, the strength of the, the, the creative uh, ideas we have on the table. Um, and uh, and we, we like to keep it, uh, keep it flexible. But again, those are the two most important uh, inputs. When we're looking to build our Super Bowl plan for a given brand, like for instance, Michelob Ultra, we're always looking for cultural context. We're looking for uh, entertainment value. And more and more, we are looking for at Super Bowl as a platform that has the ability to set up the entire year. Of course, not only as a, as a, as a film, of course, we all do a you know, beautiful job of uh, integrated marketing programs, selling beer on the shop floor, social assets, PR, all of that good stuff. But most importantly, now we're looking at Super Bowl as a way as chapter one uh, of the entire year. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not a single, it's not a, a shot that we fire just at the beginning of the year. It's chapter one of this book that's going to be written throughout the entire next year. So to go, I just want to dig down a little bit more about the NBA courtside promotion that you guys did because it was it was pretty amazing. And also talk about Ryder Cup. So how do you, how do you manage through all the challenges this year? And, and I, I just want to make sure people who didn't see your whole presentation that you talk a little bit more about the NBA court side and how that idea and, and talk a little bit like when things hopefully go back to normal um, and we have fans in the stands, how do you see the evolution of NBA court side playing? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, this was again. I, I can't, I can't stress this enough. I mean, the partnership with with the NBA in this case was instrumental uh, to uh, to do something as bold as as Michael Boltro Courtside. Uh, really, you know, uh, unique when you think about it. I believe that ten years down the road, people are probably going to look back at this time, and 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 you know, it's going to be, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a chapter so, so, somewhat in the in the in the, the history of sports. Ricardo, uh, you're younger than me. Uh, ten years. We don't. We may not be here ten years to look back. Let's <laughs> shorten that window to five. <laughs> five five years. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and, you know, think about it, I mean, bringing people to sit virtually, uh, you know, watching, uh, watching this, this, uh, this, this game. And, and the question was, well, wh why can, you know, fans just simply watch it on TV? Uh, what, what's the added value of doing something like this? And, and again, I mean, we were reminded uh, that, you know, people's interaction, humanity, the fact that you could interact with people sitting virtually in your section. The fact that you could see yourself on on on, on TV, on broadcast, literally sitting courtside. I mean, yeah. getting uh, you know, your a couple of seconds on TV that never gets old, right? So, uh, but then also we hosted uh, halftime uh, Q and As with legends. So we have re recall one of them, amazing session with Scotty Pippen halftime, uh, where literally fans sitting courtside could ask questions and, and listen directly from from Scotty Pippen. We did a number of those. Uh, and that's what I believe this allowed us to do, bringing what would be a otherwise unattainable experience. Think about it, session, you know, Q&A session with, with Scotty Pippen, being courtside. I mean, we made that possible for a number of fans. And, and that's, that's great, uh, created a number of memorable moments. And, and now we're thinking about the next iteration of this, of course, how can we uh, bring some of these elements into the future? You know, it's been a crazy year for a lot of reasons. <laughs> you know, the pandemic, the election, uh, but also there are cultural changes that are going on in the marketplace too, right? We certainly have seen a lot of things happen this year, hopefully things that are changing the world for the good. What are those cultural considerations uh, and some of those changes that are going on and how are you approaching that knowing that, um, you know, the, the world is changing in front of us? Another, of course, very important uh, uh, moment this year was everything we've seen around social justice. Uh, and that's why I, I go back to, you need to be real, really clear uh, as an organization, as a brand, uh, what your values are, where, what do you stand for? Because that's what will allow you to make uh, decisions and, and be, and, and doing the right things for you. Uh, Sorry about that. For, no worries. For, for us, uh, you know, we saw uh, this as, as uh, an, 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 a moment where, you know, we could reassert what we believe in deeply uh, uh, as a company. Uh, we believe in, in diversity, in inclusion. Uh, we, we don't believe in, in, in racism. And, 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 and this was, again, another moment for us to be able to, again, restate our our point of view our position uh, through our partnership with with the nba and of course in a number of other initiatives that we had and will continue to do so uh you know it was it was uh, all together when we look at everything that happened this year and we still have a few weeks to go but when you look at everything that happened this year between between the pandemic between the social justice movement i mean uh, hopefully we can take good things good learnings and we could you know, make progress. We made progress as people, as marketers, as a society, and I think we're going to go into 2021 stronger than we were probably uh, uh, January 2020. Yeah. Well, listen. If 2021 is the same as 2020, it's going to be a long year. So we're all praying that. Um, uh, that yeah. So please. Um, so what, one of the questions somebody sent us was, if, do you guys ever look at any other brands as inspiration? Do you guys ever say, wow, they, they're doing some unique things here? And do you ever like look at that and help form what you guys want to do? All the time. I mean, we, we love to, uh, to, uh, to, to look around us and, and, and most often outside of our own industry. Uh, I continue to be inspired by, by the work. 
that Burger King continues continues to do, uh, you know, insanely uh, disruptive, different, very true to what 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 they are about. Uh, Nike, of course, incredible source of inspiration. Apple, I mean, there's so much uh, great work being done out there, and and we love to see great work because it, it helps everybody. <laughs> it helps everybody in the sense that it inspires us to do better work ourselves, but then it also uh, I believe in an interesting way it positions brands in in a better light to consumers at large and 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 content and, and advertising everything that we do to reach out to consumers the more good stuff collectively we can put out there the better it is for everybody you know the other thing that and i think we're just about done but i wanted to ask you a couple of questions about uh video games and esports like how do you guys handle video games as sport? We uh, we have a platform not with Michelob Ultra specifically with with uh, Bud Light uh, moving into that that space. And then again, I think I would go back to the point as as Anheuser Busch that great tradition of innovation and looking to what's next. I think uh, you know Nick Kelly and the team uh, you know are constantly looking at different opportunities, different ways for us to be able to to connect with legal drinking age consumers uh, in, in, in passion points around sports that are important for them. So we'll continue to be excited about what's what's coming next. So tell us, give us the crystal ball, right? Let's rub it. What is 2021 <laughs> going to look like for sports? Look, I, 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 look I'm an optimist by, by default. <laughs> by, uh, <laughs> I'm always looking at the glass half full. I think we're about to go into an amazing year. Of course, I'm also, I mean, and we're all, I think, encouraged by the, the, the vaccine news we heard uh, earlier this month. But I feel like fans are waiting for it. Uh, we are ready. Hopefully, the world will come back and we're going to have probably one of the most epic years in sports uh, in recent memory. Wow. I said it. <laughs> <laughs> I called it. Uh, well, listen, I love it. Listen, we. We love your brands, right? From you know Budweiser to Michelob across your entire portfolio. You guys, yeah. Oh, right there, David. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. So we, you know, listen, um, huge fans from a consumption standpoint. Huge fans from what you guys have done from a creative standpoint and how much you have meant just to the fabric of American sports over the years, truly. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying is like, you know, we watch the Super Bowl and what does everybody want? Everybody wants to know like what the ads are gonna be, right? Especially the Budweiser ads, right? And, and the AB Bev, InBev ads. So we, that's, that's what right. we wait for. So you guys have been amazing. You know, just keep up the amazing work, right? Um, Michelob Ultra, right, is, is just skyrocketing. And, you know, thanks to you and the work of all the people at AB and Bev. So uh, keep up the great work. Um, um, you, your passion and, and, and your positivity is so exciting. And I'm praying that everything you just rubbed the ball about is that uh, it's going to be a great 2021. So it's been a pleasure Thank meeting you, you. And I wish you nothing but health and success in 2021. Right. Thanks so yes. much, Jim. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you both. This was really phenomenal. Uh, you know, again, any excuse to, you know, pop a, a cold one at 11 o'clock